it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. It is May and the garden is really starting to show out for the summer. Things have put on a lot of bulk. This last week we had some crazy, crazy, crazy rains. And so things like my hydrangeas, my petunias, the salvia, my glads are, have literally grown and started blooming leaps and bounds in just the last week. Things in the cut flower garden, the things we started growing from seed, they're growing really well. I planted some uh, bush beans, literally between the day I direct seeded them, 10 days later, they were like two inches tall. It's like everything just got a great dose of steroids. It's crazy. So we're gonna start over by the shed where you might be able to see my newest project, the paper patio that my mom and brother helped me put together last week. I'm so excited for y'all to see that video, but it looks, it looks really good. And the flowers look really good. My hydrangeas are doing really well. So I think we should just get right into this. I'm gonna start showing you all the pretty blooms. Let's go. All right, y'all. Hopefully next month in June, we will have all of these little pieces of pea gravel put back on the path and you will no longer see this. But despite the path, everything is looking fabulous. We have our rose and our sweet Alyssa here. And you can see that our little rose, this is Emily Bronte, David Austin, starting to put out new buds and new blooms. This is her second show of the season and she is brand new. We just planted her from dirt, dirt, from dirt, from bare root. Our sweet Alyssa, this is a snow princess by Proven Winners. Uh, she had a lot more blooms before the rain. So one tip that I've gotten recently is that after you get a hard, hard rain to go through and make sure you use water soluble fertilizer on everything, which should be doing every week. But I tend to do more like once a month, once every other week, just kind of depends on the month. Um, but after a rain is a great time to do it because you really need to boost those blooms. So that is something I will be doing in the next couple of days. Hopefully we'll get, get more blooms, boost them back up. It is beautiful either way. And you can see that my pop star hydrangea is finally blooming. I can definitely probably come in and clip back some of these dead branches that are not leafing out, but you know, she is so pretty. Now last year she was a mix of pink and purple and blue. My soil here is just so pink, you know? Almost all my hydrangeas are pink, which I love. I really liked that pink bur purple blue mix. So I think I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of acidifier around her and my twist and shout and see if I can get these to kind of have those colors. I did go ahead and fix my rose standards, meaning I had to pop them out. They were sunk really low and I put bricks in the bottom because they kept falling over and it was really bad. The, the roses were almost completely defoliated and they were not blooming and they are much happier. You can see they are putting out new buds, new leaves. All of this red is growth. So I think they are much, much happier now that they are not falling over. And these are a yellow kind of buttercup. Uh, here's a spent bloom that just bloomed. <laughs> but you can see it's like a drift knockout rose where it has an open airy center. So they're really pretty. And the Emily Bronte David Austin rose behind me has a yellow center. So they're beautiful together. The twist and shout here, these are by Endless Summer is a lace cap and she is just the big sister of pop star which is right up here so this guy only gets i think two to three and this gets four to five so almost the same plant they do great here in our hot summers uh but just gets bigger so if you want a full review of those i did a full look at all my endless summer hydrangeas last summer when we planted the pop star not sponsored 
I've just had really good luck with them and I haven't had great luck with a lot of other hydrangeas because we're so hot here. So I'll link that below. But the glads over here, y'all, they're just getting ready to bloom. And I have been using these bamboo stakes, you can see down here, to prop them up. They do beautifully for the glads because they're tall enough. Like these look crazy tall right now, but the blooms go all the way up to the very tippy top of the stakes by the time they're fully blooming. So, you know, it is my best way I have found to keep them from snapping off and breaking, which is the worst thing. My mums are showing out my lilies. These are purple dream lilies. I love them. I also have stargazer lilies in here. Which are still still coming up and they will bloom later. So we have two seasons of interest, earlier summer, later summer with those. And I kind of have them interplanted. So I have some on the other side of the dream lilies as well. My foxgloves that were glorious here are just about done with their first bloom stock. They may do a little more. I'll come in and deadhead them. But you know, same with my verbena. I just deadheaded her. She needs some fertilizer. Salvia is coming in here, but this came back from last year. It's just not as full as I'd like. Same with my walking iris down here. What is full this year and looking just the best it's ever been is my oak leaf hydrangea. It is literally the most blooms I've ever seen on it in one season. This is its third year. So first they sleep, then they creep, then they leap. Maybe it's the other way, I don't remember, but it's definitely leaping, y'all. Butterfly bush is getting ready to just burst into bloom. And that is my hot pink one, which I love. My balloon flowers have been doing well. Cat mint. And then we have the cut flower slash fruit and vegetable garden. And y'all, 90% of this has been grown by me from seed, which is kind of the coolest thing ever. You might have caught the videos where I planted out all the seeds from the milk jugs. I do a lot of milk jugs over the winter for the winter sowing method. And then I did direct seed quite a few things. So I'm not gonna give you a like blow by blow of each plant, but I will give you a look at it. And I'm actually gonna be doing a video later this week on how I planned out what to plant where and uh, uh, just an overall tour of what's in each bed and how it's doing now. I'm also gonna be showing you the planner that I used for it. My friend Kim has an amazing uh, digital ebook garden planner, which is, I use it for my whole garden, but I use some of her pages to plan out my cut flower garden. And I'll show you a peek at uh, the charts that I made in the planner. Because y'all, it was so hard. I have 12 beds. And this is only my second year planting anything in these raised beds. So it was it's pretty challenging to figure out what to plant, what seeds to buy, when I needed to start them. So her planner was very helpful for me as a new raised bed gardening person. <laughs> Look, the things are growing. But before we get in the beds, you'll notice I have quite a few new pots because we bought, my mom and I have been getting quite a few pots um, from Facebook Marketplace the last couple weeks. So this is a new plant I'll be planting soon. We, uh, my mom and I saw Laura with Garden Answer plant this and it is the peach sorbet blueberry from Bushel and Berry. Mom literally ordered this off of homedepot.com because we had to have it just came in the mail yesterday. So I'm still watering it. And she's actually, I think gonna be planted in this gray pot next to this blueberry, which is doing excellent since we planted it. And I have been literally getting berries off of it every single day. They are delicious. Cannot wait until it is big enough to have like a whole handful every day and not just a couple. I also got 
but I, I mean, my mom bought me. Thanks, mom. My gardening budget is done for the month, for the season. The uh, Proven Winner Super Binia Pink Cashmere. So this is one of their new plants for the summer. And I've seen a lot of people raving about it who tried it last year. And so when I saw it at the nursery, she was getting a bunch of sparkling amethyst, my mom. And I was like, oh my God, I want this. And she thought it would be so pretty trailing out of this low urn. So she bought me one to plant. And we have my two other blueberry bushes. So these are the pink lemonades and they have grown so much in the last week. We have a bunch of Direct seeded sweet alyssum, zinnias, gumbrina, amaranth is a beast. These are the beans I was telling you about. 10 days. 10 days. Status, uh, celiosa. Now you may also notice that my cricket and I made ourselves some beautiful new plant tags. So I know exactly what everything is. Oh, I'm very excited. Still have to, got to get this path done, but it's getting there. Got it. We've got a lot coming up. I think I'm going to need to replant uh, this row. and Maybe this row, because only two of these pin cushions have come up. But that's okay. Two rows out of all of these. And then we have a bittersweet moment my strawberry plants, which are doing fabulously, have a new addition, the lily cat. If you've been here for any amount of time, you may have seen the videos, me gardening with my orange cat, Lily, who passed away last year. I've had her since I was 16. She is my soul cat. I miss her every day and she, loved strawberries. Like if I was eating one, she would wrap her paw around my hand and like pull it to her mouth. She was obsessed. And so we found this little cat with angel wings. My mom bought it for me and we put her in the strawberry bed. And I just think she would love it there. But we can't talk about that right now or we will start crying. So we're going to move on. <laughs> I really like it. Thank you, mom. She has been very, very sweet to me. It was actually my 10th wedding anniversary this month, which is kind of crazy. And you may or may not know that my husband is no longer with us. So my mom was extra, extra, extra sweet to me this month. I, I love you, mom. Thank you. Back to the garden. My dusty Miller that we cut back. These were all planted last year. They are doing fabulous. They are still not half as great as mom's, but they're starting to fill out. We've got our potato beds. We've got Yukon Gold. We've got Red Norlands, and we've got sweet potatoes. You can see I've got some potting soil here. I need to hill them all up because they are getting quite leggy in even just the last couple days. <laughs> so poor little potatoes need some dirt. Our dahlia bed is starting to grow. Of course, only the two of four varieties that I have here, the two I liked the least are doing the best and this self-seeded cosmos. My watermelons, those are cucumbers. These are the watermelon. These are direct seeded cosmos from last year that then self seeded for this year. And I just pinched the whole bed back last month and they are rewarding me as they always do with even more blooms. So we will probably come out in the next uh, week or two once these have bloomed and cut a whole bunch for a bouquet. And then they will just, they will just keep going. Likewise, our direct seeded zinnias are doing fabulous and are probably to the phase where I could come out and pinch back some of these taller ones. Um, I also either need to move some of the ones that came up two to a piece or direct seed a few more 
only like one, two spots in this whole row didn't come up. One there and one there. So that's only four spots in the whole bed. That's pretty good. My tomato plant is doing really good. I've got a whole bunch of tomatoes for the day that I could come grab. Little cherry tomatoes. I hate tomatoes with passion, but my mom loves them and she does not have a fruit vegetable garden. She asked me to grow her some and she eats them like candy when she comes over. So I don't mind. My beans that are doing super well, I need to thin them out um, and I need to figure out what's eating them because something likes them a lot. Then my carrots and onions starting to come up, which is exciting. I'll try to show you in the shade here. Little tiny green sprouts. Goodness. Mm, yes. Oh, you can see how sunny it is with the shadow. I'm trying to decide what to do here. If I want to bring this threshold all the way out or if I want to cut this back. This whole area that's just sand and grass will hopefully fill in with grass but I don't know. The new paper patio, y'all. Oh. I love it, love it, love it, love it. It was definitely a labor of love and it might have a hard time showing up on camera with the gray pavers, but it, I love it. And I love being able to come out and sit in the shade when I'm working on the cut flower garden or in my shed. Oh, it's just so nice. I'm going to still be working um, on the pots here, but the video for the pavers will be coming out soon. Not only did my mom and brother come help me put this down, but this is just the tip of the iceberg because these were pavers from a friend of my mom's house. This is 300 pavers, 250 pavers. She had over 2000 pavers and mom is getting every single one because they're putting down a new patio mom wants all of them she doesn't need them all but we're going to be using the majority of them for a greenhouse floor we are going to be building for at mom's house it's gonna be exciting y'all the tulip tree that we planted in our pot is doing really well and we have like i said two more pots here i'm going to be putting a proven winners pink bubblegum super tunia vista in this big pot and I think some zinnias in this one, but I wanted to show you, oh, I wish I had gotten it in its full glory, but my gardenia, oh, it smells so good. And it finally bloomed. It has not bloomed for us the last couple of years. I cannot wait for next year, sitting by these pretty white blooms on the patio, drinking some lemonade and smelling the gardenias can see the rest of the pavers. So I got 400 total. This is all the rest of them. I just made us a little paver patio over here for all our milk jugs so they're no longer sitting in the weeds. I may leave them like this forever or I may use the top portions uh, for the other side where I'm going to build a potting bench. These are the ones I purchased that I'm going to be returning because I got free ones and free is the best price. <sighs> now, on the other side of the shed, past my purple gladiolus, which is just about done. My gumfrina that I just planted, hopefully will take off soon. But, even though the roses are done, well, the knockout rose will come back. We just cut it back and she is releafing out is my white hydrangea and she is glorious this year these big white blooms and they seem to be aging to some kind of a dusty pink which i honestly kind of love it's still not the same baby pink as the ones up top but it's glorious and this is the first time she's bloomed for us so Hopefully next year we'll get even more blooms. Here's the rest of the pots. So I'm working on a little 
Klaus, Klaus Darby inspired pot uh, display. Still leveling them, so don't get too excited. But I only have planted in them a sweet alyssum and the eucalyptus I'm growing from seed. Likewise, likewise, that makes no sense. Uh, my milkweed from last year, one has come back and is doing great. The other two did not come back, so I will probably plant some more over here, but I want a little milkweed slash garden slash pot area here. The Peggy Martin Rose, when she is in bloom, is just a stunner, and she still covers the fence the rest of the year, but I want something that kind of takes up vertical space here while not being a climber because I have the Peggy Martin there, all our lantana we transplanted, just getting ready to bloom, and our smoke on the mountain bush. I think this one might have died, but this one's at least trying to come back. My ruby hyacinth bean has finally started climbing up this baby. The other one still not put out any trellises. That's okay. My dill and parsley and lantana and the super tunia bordeaux and this planter, killer. But maybe the prettiest spot in the garden, at least this half for the month, is this moment right here. We have bee bomb going crazy and the bees love it. Behind them, my cone flowers are just starting to take off. The gara has started to die back. I need to cut it back and it will flush again for us this season. And my unplugged pink salvia has shot up with the rain and looks amazing. So this is three plants and I planted them last year. So they have come back with a vengeance. I love them. My mom actually got a few. So they are going to be everywhere. Our sweet alyssum here needs some fertilizer, but it's, it's big and bushy. My double watermelon coneflower has just about quadrupled in size. Like you can see the blooms here that we had last month are gone. And our new one is all the way down there. And these were the tallest things on it last month. So hopefully we'll get more blooms. I don't know why we wouldn't, but she's looking great. Speaking of looking great, we have our glads, pinks, dark purples, light purples, and my least favorite of all, and the only red I have in the garden, red. But they look so good, you guys. This one is the first one that bloomed, and I wish it was just like right there. <laughs> but these stakes, while they are long enough, they don't quite hold in place as much as, as sturdier stakes. For the price and for the height, they work great. They're the tallest stakes I can find. Whew. Bumblebee is really working overtime. Probably a bumble friend. I have quite a few bees right now, which is the whole goal, you guys. My hydrangea. This is what I love, the combination of pinks and purples on the same plant. Look at that dark pink right here. There are still buds coming out. 
there are still blooms opening up. This plant, endless summer, bloom struck. Well, this is one of the first like five things I planted in my garden. And she is just the best, just the best. We have quite a few glads over here starting to come up. The sun comes up this way, so things will start to bloom this way. But our Supertunia Vista bubblegums here are starting to really show out. Our foxgloves, they still are coming. Still got quite a few that have not bloomed for us and will over the season. But the first round, the first three that I purchased with bloom stocks on them are just, you know, the first stocks are down. This one, as you can see, is already pushing secondary stocks. And y'all, the yarrow is going to go crazy sooner or later. Ooh, our experimental Ooh. Silver Falls Diachondra as a ground cover is going splendidly. You can see it's rooting in all the way along. And I love it. Right up here is a really good example of one that is just doing its best to spread out and fill in as much of this upper space as possible, which is exactly what I wanted. And our two hot pink lantanas are about to pop off. Oh, get it, girl. You go. You go. They will fill in this whole area, literally, if you let them, like, not even see the Silver Falls. But before we get to the other half of the garden, I am going to bring it back. Wind it just a smidge. I've got to hit the other half of this garden bed especially because this moment with the water pump, the lilies, the geraniums, and the balloon flowers, and the foxglove. Oh, this might be my favorite moment at all in the garden. I wish that this mom looked as good as the other one. She's having trouble in the middle there, but that's okay. That's okay. We've got the foxgloves down here. I just cut back all my zinnias, and as you can see, they are, they are putting out new buds, blooming. I want this whole front area to just be wall-to-wall -wall zinnias. And our white gumbrina that we planted in the milk jugs and then planted out is doing great. So we'll have a whole wall of white gumbrina with pink zinnias in front of it. Dead. A whole bunch of the sweet alyssum from seed over here. My pin cushions need to be cut back, but they are putting out new blooms. New bloom, old bloom right there. These foxglove are coming back from last year, so it is their second year. They're so pretty. My lavender has all new buds after being cut back. Love it. This mom is showing out. We have a long enough growing season here that we can let the mums grow um, in, the, in the spring cut them back and they'll bloom again for us in the fall, which is nice. But I'd like to showcase this beautiful pink apricot color foxglove. I love it. It is still putting out babies, but the two tallest spires are just about done. And before we go back to the other side, I'm gonna, gonna give you one last look at the oak leaf. She is starting to turn from white, green, to raspberry. Blooms everywhere. So it may be the last month we have her really white and beautiful. She will turn mauve. And then in the fall, we will get that 
really pretty burgundy kind of leaves. So, I mean, just the best plant. I'm going to put up a picture right now of what this guy looked like when we planted her two years ago. She was literally a bunch of little starts from my mom's plant. So like these little guys down here, under here, that's a start. I could dig that up and bring it to someone else. You know, technically this, this guy could be dug up. This guy could be dug up. I'm just gonna keep letting her fill out. That's why I keep planting annuals like foxgloves and things around her base. And if she wants the whole garden bed, she can have it. It's fine with me. Let's go ahead. Head back to the other side by the petunias. Which are looking really big and luscious this month. I love them with these little egg trellises and they just come through the bars. But the star of the show this time of year it's always the hydrangeas, and this is my biggest lace cap. Another twisted shout. I love her. The bees love her. This should be a bee tour of my garden. Oh. We do have the supertunias and silver falls diachondra, the same as is on the ground in our window boxes and they are doing fabulous all the way down. I cannot wait until later in the summer when they really are just like huge back here. But this one, Supertunia has been here for three years and she's really leggy. So I'm not sure if I should cut her back, fertilizer and cut her back, what, but tempted to plant another supertunia right here but if they're happy they can get up to three four feet wide here's a snow princess that's really loving her life when they're happy and it's not raining they're just carpet of snow likewise my april night salvia is happy and coming through the bars of her cage but the cage is doing its purpose which is to keep the bunnies from eating her all those blue blooms pin cushions she needs a little deadheading too verbena now i have been waiting to take this tour on a day that the daylily, this is my Barbara Mitchell, was blooming. And it just didn't happen. She had two blooms yesterday. So I'm gonna put up a footage right here from yesterday. Pretend it's right now. She's beautiful. Fox gloves are beautiful. Cone flowers. These are a shorter variety. And I have three of them, though they are literally three different heights. I've got medium, small, and large. All planted three years ago, all the same type. I don't know. Big sister, little sister, medium sister. Go figure. This is only the second year for my cat mint, and for some reason, she is only blooming a few places. I don't quite know why. But the Silver Falls I put in front of her is doing well. And the Shasta Daisies have finally settled in and are doing well. They will continue to fill out this whole area. My glads. So many glads, so few steaks. <sighs> My butterfly bush, I'm probably gonna need to cut this Laura Pedlum back a smidge because she is literally just starting to bloom. There we go. And she needs a little more sun, so I have to keep this guy trimmed from around her. And I did cut it back like 
month and a half ago, but come in and cut a little bit more back so she gets more air and sun. My knockout roses were cut back and are just starting to come back in. My lantana, this is yellow lantana from last year. Well, yellow and pink. Finally starting to put on blooms. My white gara is not 100% done. She's close. These are new from this year. My mom planted some last year that are so good. I cannot wait till mine look like hers. Ooh, my pen cushions that were looking really good last week are looking eaten up. And I actually, I'll show you. I have a glad down here that's eaten up. So something is eating things over here. I'm going to have to figure out what before it takes everything. Uh, my trailing lantana is looking fabulous, but needs some fertilizer because she had purple blooms on her. There we go, right there. Last week, this week, one, one bloom. This one petunia that came back from last year is doing well. My mystic blue spire salvia starting to take off. My vinca starting to take off. This butterfly bush. Here's the glad I was talking about. I, you can see I staked it up because it had buds on it. Now it's a stick. So what would eat buds off of gladiolus and pincushion plants? A couple leaves on these salvia are definitely munched. That's not a normal leaf shape. And for some reason, this one Vinca is struggling. So weird things going on down at this half of the garden, but still doing well. Oh, this iris has a weird white sustenance on it as well. I have to ask mom to come over. If any of y'all have suggestions, leave them down below. I obviously need some help at this half of the garden. But my uh, delphinium that we transplanted is doing well. Dianthus. Peonies are still coming up. This hydrangea is doing well. And my vitex has buds on it. So despite the few odd happenings, most things look really, really good this month. And I'm very happy with all of the buds and blooms. I have a few more things that blueberry and the super tunias to plant. Did want to show you uh, the things we planted on the porch. So I will pop up there in a second. But for the most part, the garden is looking really, really good for me. Hopefully June will be better and then we'll start to get really hot in July. So I want things to get big and established before then. Let's pop up to the porch and then I will leave y'all for the month. All right, so despite our little plant nursery, these are the things I have for my pots. This geranium had a bunch of buds last month or last week. We just deadheaded them all. But they'll come back, as you can see. The ones up here are looking fabulous. Our butterfly bush has buds all over it. Our sweet alyssum has buds all over it. The vinca looks great. Our Shasta daisy is still like the same size. I think we probably should take some of these dead leaves out, but regardless. Our fan flower, Scavola, she's looking great in the garden and in the pot. Dun, 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 dun. This rug needs washed, but our impatient was wilted about 20 minutes ago, so he's looking better. My fuchsia. I love these blooms. They look so pretty up here. So pretty. My Lizzie Anthus is looking pretty. And my shade pot. Begonia and the other fuchsias. I hope you guys liked this video and I will see you in the next garden tour in June. Bye.